Hello? They launched this week? Well, well, patch me in. No, we got to go live. I need to update the people about this right now. Sorry, folks. Uh, big news here. Stay tuned. I'll be back with you in much less than 60 seconds. Hello, folks. Welcome to 60 Seconds in Thailand. I've just received news that a rival news agency has launched this week here in Thailand. And to ensure that we remain your first choice for Thailand's news, we've patched into our big budget studio and we are now live. We have lots of news to cover, including a new COVID scare, another potential change to Thailand's cannabis laws, a mysterious floating body disease discovered in Bangkok's canals. And yes, I will close today's broadcast with an update about this rival news channel. I want get C. Parker on the ground. I want him live in five minutes. Okay, folks, our first story, Thailand is introducing new land ownership rules. As things currently stand, foreigners can own condos, but what about land? Well, until now, it's not been legal, but that's all about to change. Reports suggest that uh, the government's gonna allow foreigners the chance to buy up to one rye of land. To qualify, you must invest a minimum of 40 million million Thai bot into the kingdom. You can invest in government bonds or businesses in Thailand, but it remains unclear if an investment in the land itself would qualify. This is a big move for Thailand, and it's all aimed at attracting wealthy foreigners. Now, there's only one use for money, and that's to make more money. Will this succeed? Well, I feel that if the land and house qualifies, this would definitely result in a boom for houses over 40 million bot, especially because they're also saying that those who enter with this program are going to get a 10-year visa out of the deal. Nothing official just yet, but we'll keep you posted if and when this law is formalized. Next, some good news. The tourism industry is experiencing a bit of a rebound in its busiest time since, well, you know what. Stay inside and lock the door. Stay inside and lock the door. In June, the country welcomed 767,000 tourists, up from a half a million in May. And those of us on the ground have noticed it. There's way more international faces walking the streets of Bangkok, Phuket, and Samui these days. But it's funny because as busy as it seems to be here in Bangkok, this graph shows international arrivals over the past 10 years. And you see that little blip on the bottom right? This is what the current recovery looks like. Still a long way to go, but hard to imagine how busy it'll get here once the pre-COVID numbers of more than 3 million a month come back. One case study in particular is the infamous full moon parties down on Koh Phangan. These were officially relaunched a couple of months ago, and July's edition had over 20,000 revelers and 19,000 of them looked like this. <laughs> now, as promising as that is, there's been a recent surge in COVID cases here in Thailand that makes this tourism comeback a bit sketchy. No, no, not that kind of sketchy. We're, we're done with the full moon jokes. This recent COVID surge is due to the dreaded Omicron BA5. Can, can we add a bit of effects to that? Omicron BA5. Not bad. Give the graphics guy a raise. Yes, like everywhere in the world, this BA5 has caused some concern in Thailand. And it got to the point last week where some were calling for a reinstatement of measures to ban large gatherings. Well, if this makes you feel any better, the data shows that this latest surge is more of a blip. And talk of rolling back some of the freedoms that we have has gone away. And speaking of freedoms, there's also a game of political tug of war going on behind the scenes of Thailand's brand new cannabis laws. On June 27th, they legalized it. And overnight, this city had pot shops pop up all over the place. Hell, one local Thai was so excited that he legally changed his name to Ganja Ram. I'd like to meet you, Ganjaram. That's that's nutty. But almost immediately after it became legal, those of us who live here see news reports daily about silly things like people ODing and hospitals receiving all kinds of calls from marijuana users freaking out, which reminds me of this classic.
Then, news came out this week that said they were considering keeping marijuana legal, but making joints illegal. Figure that one out. But to reassure good folks like Ganjaram, Health Minister Anutin came out and said there will be no change in the law. So I guess there'll be no rolling back, just rolling up. Next up, scammers on the streets. Yeah, a new scam has emerged here in Bangkok. Here's how it goes. So someone was walking down the street at Khao San Road and they noticed a wallet uh, that was left out. Good Samaritan picks up the wallet, takes it to the local police station and says, hey, I found this wallet out on the street. The police say, oh, let me check. And they see 500 baht inside and some ID. They call the owner. The owner says, I'm coming right into the police station. They show up shortly thereafter and they say, well, this is my wallet, but there was 8,000 baht inside. And the tourist who picked up the wallet said, no, there was only 500 baht inside. Well, the police didn't know what to do, so they sided with the Thai person and forced the tourists to pay the 8,000 baht before they were allowed to leave. News came out days later that everyone was in on it, the tourists, the cops, everyone. So be careful out there on the streets. Next, the annual list of the world's most powerful passports was published recently, and three Asian countries topped that list. Coming in at third place was South Korea. In second place is Singapore, and can you guess the world's most powerful passport? It's Japan. I guess the world wants to see the best of the best in cosplay come and visit their countries. And now our Only in Thailand segment. Only in Thailand. Bit of a strange situation this past week unfolded in Bangkok when locals called the police because they saw someone floating in a Bangkok canal. People were shouting at him, hoping that he was responsive, but nothing. Onlookers thought the man was dead, but one brave soul jumped into the murky water to help, and then the man suddenly woke up. Turns out he was alive and well and in deep meditation. Such deep meditation, in fact, that he didn't hear anything going on and was totally unaware of the hubbub that he created. The medics arrived, confirmed he was in good health, and sent him home only in Thailand. And this story was pulled from our free newsletter, The Thailand Weekly. You can sign up by going over to our website here or following the link in the description below. And our final story has a direct impact on this very news program. We've received word that a rival news agency has opened up here in Thailand. Details are still unclear, but we've heard that they've launched on August 1st and we'll be reporting all kinds of Thailand news on their website. They're called Phuket Go. And I wanna reassure all our viewers that you need not worry. This rival startup can't compete with 60 seconds in Thailand. We will crush Phuket Go with ease. And for more, we actually sent our best field reporter, C. Parker, to the island of Phuket to file this report from their very backyard. Yes, C. Parker reporting live on the scene here in Phuket, Chris. I've immediately, there's people shouting. They're shouting at me now. They're asking me to stop. Yes, see, I'm, I'm receiving urgent word from our producer right now that, that you're in danger. Yes, are they, they're, they're, they're following? Yeah, see, we're gonna get you out of there immediately. Please try to evade them. Get on the first plane back to 60 Seconds headquarters. Thanks very much, Chris. They, they are blowing their whistles now. I appreciate the recall to Bangkok. Let's see how this story continues to unfold. This is C. Parker escaping Phuket. Well, folks, it seems like I might have underestimated this new startup, Phuket Go. What, what the hell is this? Just fire the graphics guy. What are you guys thinking? Anyway, don't worry, folks. I personally vow to crush Phuket Go, and I promise that our program will remain atop the ratings as Thailand's top news outlet.